historically amblyopia has been described very simply as when the doctor sees nothing and the patient sees nothing the diagnosis is amblyopia later the definition was uh, reconsidered and it was defined as unilateral or bilateral decrease in the visual acuity for which no organic cause can be detected in otherwise structurally normal eye and which in appropriate cases can be reversed by therapeutic measures it's a defect of central vision now when the immature visual system is attacked upon by abnormal binocular interaction and formed visual deprivation there occurs a competition between the two eyes and disused changes in the stimulus deprived eyes will lead to amblyopia thank you between the age of 2 to 4 years there occurs a period of developmental plasticity in this period the developing anatomic and functional organization of the visual system is markedly influenced by visual experiences and conditions causing abnormal visual experiences result in anatomic and electrophysiological abnormalities in striate cortex and the lateral geniculate body there is also a significant decrease in the number of cells responsive to the deprived eye there is also loss of binocularly responsive cells there is a shrinkage of cells in the lateral geniculate body and significant reduction in responsiveness of the remaining cells now coming to the different types of amblyopia there are strabismic amblyopia anisometropic stimulus deprivation iso amyotropic organic and idiopathic some common facts related to amblyopia are that amblyopia affects generally 1 to 4% of children it's commonly unilateral nearly all amblyopic visual loss is preventable or reversible with early uh, detection and proper intervention earlier the detection the prognosis is the best now to diagnose amblyopia the diagnosis is incomplete till the three conditions are fully satisfied one is the, the first is the there should be evidence of reduced visual acuity which is usually unilateral there should be a presence of amblyogenic factors and other causes of visual loss should be ruled out it is important to diagnose the amblyopia early for the early intervention now as dr amit has already taken up the visual acuity assessment in children i will be telling something uh, uh, related to visual acuity in amblyops that assessment of both line and the single letter acuity is equally important in amblyopic patients because crowding phenomena occurs more in amblyopic and assessment of near vision is also equally important as distance vision uh, in amblyopic patients secondly the speed of reading when you give amblyopia therapy the speed of reading also improves so the assessment of speed of reading is also important while assessing the visual acuity in children now coming to the fixation behavior whenever we are looking for the fixation behavior we should look for the inability to take up the fixation and to maintain it or if there is an absence of free alteration of fixation and how is the fixation whether it is foveal or extra foveal steady or wandering because the eccentric fixation has got has got the worst outcome eccentric fixation can be tested by a, a direct ophthalmoscope or 10 prism adapter vertic vertical tropia test or cover test apart from visual acuity reduction in amblyopia there are some functional other functional abnormalities which also occur in amblyopia these include the reduced contrast sensitivity special distortion special interaction crowding decrease accommodation suppression and these are the other things which occur in amblyopia there are certain treatment guidelines which we should follow when we start the amblyopia therapy that treatment the first and the important thing is the treatment should be initiated as soon as possible strict vigilance is required up to the age of 10 to 12 years even if the patients achieve equal vision after starting the therapy removal of media opacities like in congenital cataracts and correction of refractive error are required to Uh, maximize the visual gains and various methods of amblyopia therapy are targeted towards providing the affected eye with a competitive advantage the various treatment modalities the first and the impo most imp uh, important is the correction of the refractive error occlusion therapy is still till date the mainstay of amblyopia therapy then the penalization 
optics and cam stimulator nowadays nobody is using them from there are certain drugs i'll telling you in later slides coming to the refractive error correction which has been taken up by different speakers refractive error alone improves visual acuity in 25 to 33% of patients of an isometropic amblyopia we should always do a proper cycloplegic refraction as already discussed and we should pre prescribe optical uh, adequate optical correction and guidelines for prescribing glasses in children should be followed now coming to the occlusion which is the mainstay of therapy in amblyopic patients it works on the principle of forcing the eye with a poor vision to become the primary fixing eye this removes the inhibitory stimulus to the amblyopic eye arising from the sound eye now there are different types of occlusion total or partial full time or part time conventional versus uh, inverse or skin adhering spectacle mounted or rubber occluder now when we start the uh, occlusion therapy in if, if we are starting it for full time it means full waking hours in the day and depending on the age of the child we should uh, it should be like when the child is 2 years of age the good eye should be closed for 2 days and the amblyopic eye should be closed for 1 day similarly uh, in children of 3 4 or 5 years of age the uh, the ratio should be 3 is to 1 4 is to 1 or 5 is to 1 part when we are starting the part time occlusion then the uh, the different waking hours of uh, patching should be done depending on the age of the patient and severity of the amblyopia now when we are when we have started the therapy uh, the follow up in follow up visit how how you have to tell the patient to come up now when you are starting for the full time occlusion the simple rule is to examine the patient one week for every year of age that means a two year of age of child should be followed after two weeks and whenever the child comes for follow up always check the visual acuity the fixation pattern uh, and the development of occlusion amblyopia now when you have started the occlusion therapy its effect depends on what age the child has presented to you what is the density of the amblyopia what is the type of amblyopia type of occluder you are using age at which the treatment begin and the most important is the compliance to your therapy the enthusiasm on the parent side and the teacher's cooperation now once you have started the therapy now when to discontinue the occlusion therapy when when one achieves equalization of visual acuity or if there is an achievement of maximal visual acuity as assessed over a period of 3 to 6 months when there is free alteration in the squint or if there is a development of occlusion amblyopia or if there is no improvement even after starting 3 to 6 months of occlusion therapy despite good compliance not only the initial therapy is important even once you get a iso even the child achieves equal vision then you should not stop the occlusion abruptly but you should put the child on maintenance therapy by put, by giving him part time patching that means 1 to 3 hours per day or partial occlusion penalization because these helps in preventing the recurrence now coming to the penalization penalization means selectively fogging of the sound eye by means of glasses or cycloplegic drugs competitive advantage is given to the amblyopic eye by allowing the sound eye to be used either for distance or for near sound eye is either near penalized by atropinization or distance penalization by optical correction plus atropin and pharmacolog uh, atropin penalization has found has been found to be more effective it is penalization is indicated in certain circumstances like moderate amblyopics in patients who are uncooperative for occlusion latent or manifest latent nystagmus and isometropic amblyopia high hyperopia with isometropic amblyopia or it can be used as a maintenance therapy after occlusion but penalization is not as effective as occlusion because it does not abolish form and vision perception completely in addition it does not abolish binocular interaction and the consequent inhibition of amblyopic eye by the sound eye therefore any squint or anisometropia leading to abnormal binocular interaction has to be corrected before you start penalization 
Now, Pedig has done several studies regarding the timing of occlusion, how much to how much occlusion you should give, whether you should give full time, part time. So, ATS one they had. Uh, they studied patching for 6 hours versus full time uh, patching and they found similar magnitude of improvement in visual acuity ATS 2A was given in that study 2 hour occlusion versus 6 hours occlusion per day similar visual outcomes ATS 2B full time versus 6 hours patching in severe amblyopia they found similar improvement ATS 3 compared 2 hour occlusion with full time occlusion in older children they found successful Atropine daily versus weekly, they found similar magnitude of improvement in visual acuity. So the crux was that whenever child of amblyopia comes, you should give occlusion. Their thinking was like uh, whether you give it full time or whether you are giving it part time, but it should be given. And it doesn't make a difference in the long term. Child is going to improve. Now certain drugs have been tried but none has proved their efficacy like levodopa, acetylcholine or antidepressant like fluoxetine or Prozac. These two antidepressants have been shown to restore plasticity in adult visual cortex. Now screening is equally important when you are treating amblyopia. Early detection due to a very short critical period there is a need for screening to detect amblyopia at an early age. The primary health care person should look for red reflex and rule out congenital cataract, corneal dystrophies, etc. The preschool kids should be targeted. Always assess visual acuity, ocular alignment and refraction. And screening is especially indicated in low birth weight or premature infants. Now this is the chart showing the how to manage the patient of amblyopia. The first thing is the significant, uh, any physical obstruction should be removed, the refractive error should be corrected and then occlusion should be given. Now the take home messages are amblyopia is a preventable co cause of blindness. The earlier the detection, earlier the intervention, better is the prognosis. Isometropic amblyopia spectacles alone can treat it. Occlusion is still the mainstay of treatment. Full time or part time you decide depending on the age and the severity of the amblyopia. Atropine penalization, yes, can be tried in certain situation. Don't give up even in older children because they also respond to occlusion therapy. An isometropic amblyopia has the best prognosis as compared to strabismic and combined amblyopia and screening is always important. Thank you.